so here we go again today and in the last lecture if you remember we discussed about the quantification of fractals and we also discussed about the box counting dimension uh, how to calculate box counting dimension what is the concept of fractal dimensions and uh, so on so today there is a second part of this so we will learn uh, about similarity dimension which is another kind of dimensions uh, for a fractal and we will also learn about what happens if you add couple of fractal figures or multiply couple of fractal objects then what is the resultant dimension of uh, that such a complicated object so let us uh, see what we learn today so as we discussed earlier also that uh, dimensions for a fractal object uh, can be of different kind in fact uh, there are so many kind of dimensions that sometimes people feel what is the correct one in fact there is nothing correct it's a and nothing wrong uh, you have learned about box counting dimension today we are going to learn about similarity dimension then there are Hausdorff dimension packing dimension Minkowski dimension and depending on the usage uh, different people uh, have described different kind of fractal dimensions and all of them are correct it's, it, it, it depends on the context what we are talking about uh, so we will learn about some of them in this particular lecture but uh, later on you can see what uh, others are available so just to review what we did in the last lecture so in the box counting dimension we saw that we cover the shape with boxes of different side lengths where these side lengths are uh, in decreasing order uh, you keep on decreasing the length of this side of these boxes and see that how many boxes are needed to cover the whole shape whole uh, object shape and we will count the numbers this n1 and 2 and 3 of these boxes and we assume that there is a power law where n of ri is k times 1 over ri to the power d where d is the dimension of the object and how do we calculate the dimension we learned in the last lecture that we take log of both sides and simplify so we get sort of a equation of a straight line where the slope of the line will give you the dimension of the object so if the power law scaling is correct these all points will lie in a straight line and you can easily determine the box counting dimension so the db will be limit we can also find a formula for nr then db if you remember we said limit r tend into zero log nr upon log one upon r so we saw that in the last lecture now uh, as i promised i'll uh, just discuss about the what will be the dimension of the product of two fractal objects so we take an example like product of a cantor set and a line segments so if you multiply a line segment of unit length let's say to a cantor set so how the object will look like first of all we should uh, understand so when we, let's say that there is a fractal it's a, it's a cantor set and in the x direction and the line segment in the y direction perpendicular to that thing so this uh, type of construction we call as multiplication of these two objects or a product of the cantor set and the line segment so this will look like something like that this is a cantor set in x direction and a line in the y direction so how do we compute the box counting dimension of this fractal we cover it with a smaller and a smaller boxes keeping in mind that we take the boxes to be squares we did that in the last time but the square is not necessary it's not necessary that you take only squares you can the the main gist of the thing is that the diameter of the shape whatever shape you take it should go to zero it can be a rectangle it can be a triangle it can be a square but ultimately when you change the scale the, in the limit the diameter of the shape or the largest uh, diagonal of the shape should go to zero so uh, you can do uh, like you can cover with the whole square or then uh, you take the one third size of the square and then you see you need six such squares for that if you take one by ninth of size of the square then you need that 36 of such square and we can find out the pattern also here and one by three is six which is three to the power and two to the power one one by nine is uh, 36 which is three to the power two and two to the power two so and one by three n is 3 to the power n into 2 to the power n. I'm sorry, you can not see it there, 
but yeah it is there uh, so uh, now i will adjust i adjusted the size of the slide so that uh, nothing is hindered so from this observation we saw that n is 1 by 3 to the power n equals to 3 to the n 2 to the n and we will see that we can compute the box counting dimension directly from the formula and uh, again simplifying so those things log n 1 by 3 to the power n upon log 1 upon 1 upon r and it comes out to be when you simplify log 3 to the power n plus log 2 to the power n and log 3 and it comes out to be when this n log 3 and log 3 cancel out n cancel out here 1 plus log 2 upon log 3 now if you remember log 2 upon log 3 was the dimension of the Cantor set and 1 is the dimension of a line so what do we make uh, out that if you multiply two object if you multiply two object and and you calculate the dimension of the resultant object the dimension of the resultant object of a product of two objects is the individual sum of the individual dimensions see one was the dimension of line log 2 upon log 3 was the dimension of the Cantor set so this is the sum of the box counting dimension of the line segment and the Cantor set now we see what happens if we have the sum of a Sierpinski's gasket and line segment. So we saw how the box counting dimension comes out to be the of the product of a two couple of uh, uh, fractal objects. Now we see what happens if we add them together. Now adding is different than the sum, than the uh, product. So what is adding? Adding will be something like that. You keep the Sierpinski's gasket and add a line to it. So it's not a product. If there is a product you will see a sort of a 3d thing here not exactly 3d but uh, this is a the addition will be just keeping them side by side so now uh, you see n1 if you take the square unit square this is the unit length you need two such uh, squares for that so n1 is 2 which is 1 plus 1 n half you need 1 2 3 4 5 such squares 5 3 to the 1 plus 2 to the 1 and 1 by 4 will be 13 which is 9 plus 4 and that is 3 to the 2 plus 2 to the 2 so now we are getting uh, an, uh, a pattern here again so n 1 by 2 to the power n is 3 to the power n plus 2 to the power n so that is the general formula we are getting now the straightforward approach may appear to run into some trouble why how can we simply imply log 3n 3 to the power n plus 2 to the power n because it, it will be very difficult to find out the logarithm of this kind of object so you apply a trick so 3 to the power n plus 2 to the n can be written as 3 to the n 1 plus 2 by 3 to the power n now we will see later on in the next slide that it is easier to calculate so now the calculation becomes very straightforward so you can just uh, go through the calculations again so limit n tending to infinity log n half to the power n divided by log 1 over 1 half to the power n so it and we know the formula for this part which is log 3 to the n plus 2 to the n and this is log 2 to the power n now we use that trick here and redistribute this log over this and log 3 to the n and this becomes uh, in when the, the limit n tends to infinity this portion becomes 0 it just you are just left with log 3 to the power n on log 2 to the power n because this limit will go to 0 this will always go to the 0 when n goes uh, n goes larger and larger so that is what you are going to get so this is and log 3 upon log 2 that is the dimension you are getting and if you remember log 3 upon log 2 was a dimension of yes Sierpinski's gasket so we see that this is the larger of the box count and the dimension of the line was 1 and this is 1.56 so the dimension is of the resultant object is the is equal to the dimension of the larger object or the dimension of the object which has a larger dimension so that's the larger of the box counting dimension of the line segment and the gasket so this is what we uh, learned so we learned a couple of things if you multiply two objects the resultant dimension will be the summation of the two individual dimensions and if you sum two objects if you add them together then the resultant dimension will be the larger dimension larger of the uh, of uh, among the both objects whichever has the larger dimension 
that's what will be the result in dimension of the uh, object so uh, we, we see a lot of time people make a lot of mistakes to uh, trying to understand this uh, concept so suppose uh, there is an architect he sees the side elevation view of the building uh, and he's uh, he try to find out the dimension of that so what do we do with this we cover the image with boxes of several sizes count the boxes and do a log log plot so that's the standard procedure because for this you cannot find a pattern but you just have to count the boxes if the points are close to a straight line then we find out the slope of the line and we say okay that's the box counting of the dimension that's the dimension of the particular object so uh, we'll try to do that we cover them with different boxes count them together and see how it comes out this is a table we are going to get if uh, this is one you get for this size of the square we get 17 such object for half you get 53 or such object for 1 by 4 you get 183 such objects and so on so we and then we try to plot log 1 upon r versus log and r and we see uh, it first one if you just take the just take uh, only three points it looks like it's a straight line and one can jump to the quick conclusion that this indeed is a fractal the slope of this line comes up to be uh, if you take first and second point it's about that it's about that about 1.7 so we say okay this number are not close to 2 so the shape must be fractal because it has a dimension 1.7 but is that true see what uh, is happening here is that object was a summation of several different objects so our results are wrong as we discussed in the example of the gasket and line segment example if a shape consists of several pieces the dimension of the shape is the largest of the dimensions of the pieces of the individual pieces so that shape which we saw in the last slide it contains rectangles triangles and so on and these rectangles have dimension 2 so the whole shape must have dimension 2 why it was wrong with the calculation why didn't we get the dimension 2 with this because we didn't go uh, to a further finer and finer level so we don't have nearly small boxes were used and box counting ratios can be very slow to converge to dimensions sometimes you need a large set of data so one need to be very very careful to consider that now what you can do for your next uh, assignment is that you, these are a couple of or four practice problems take each uh, figure and find out the individual box counting dimension so that's your next uh, assignment uh, which you can submit in in a week or so okay so now we come to the next part of this lecture uh, which i promised earlier that i'll be telling you about the similarity dimension now this dimension is one of the most uh, what you can say one of the most easiest way to calculate the, since the dimension of an object if the dimension is well behaved if the object is well behaved then you can easily calculate the similarity dimension and it will always be equal to the box counting dimension box counting dimension are used for little bit complicated uh, objects but similarity dimension can be used for simpler mathematical objects or which look simple which uh, for, for which you can easily find out the uh, scaling uh, factors so the factors which are exactly similar with all pieces scaled by same factor see this is the key word here all of the pieces of the fractal should be scaled by the same factor then for such objects the calculation of box counting dimension can be simplified very very in a, in a, in a drastic way we call this a similar similarity dimension and later on we will discuss about something which is called Moran equation which we probably will do in the next uh, lecture which will generalize this computation to only to the self similar factor where different pieces are scaled by different factors so that's what we will see later now for self similar factors such as Koch curve and Sierpinski's gasket uh, the box counting dimension is easy very easy to compute if provided you take the box sizes as the power of the scaling factor like for the Koch curve where you are reducing all of the things as one by third of the original size so if you take the scaling factor as one by three you your work is done very quickly for similarly for Sierpinski's gasket you know you take the scaling factor as one half 
then your work is very very easy to calculate box dimension box counting damage so if we take the gasket can be covered with 3 to the power n boxes of side length 1 by 2 to the power n then the box counting dimension is very simplified db as we saw earlier we get this log 3 upon log 2 we already know that now because this n factor because all the things are uh, scaled by the same factor this cancels out of the computation it is not an accident but it is a consequence of the self similar scaling so this observation we can the people can use to simplify the computation of the dimension in case of only of the self now to see the common pattern here and to give a shortcut for the computing of the dimension of a self similar shape we define a similarity dimension for a self similar shape made up of n copies of itself each scale by a similarity with same contraction factor r the similarity dimension is defined as log n upon log 1 upon r this this is a dimension uh, definition of the dimension you will find in the most of the literature for when we start uh, studying fractals this is the one which we all learn together so this formula can be generalized to account for the possibility when the different pieces are scaled by different contraction factors uh, then we will discuss the moran equation later on but okay for the present we just uh, confine ourselves to the uh, fact that all the the whole of the fractal of the whole of the fractal object is scaled by a same amount so the similarity dimension will always be equal to the box counting dimension but the box counting dimension is defined over a wide variety of shapes uh, not only uh, for simple shapes but for complex shapes also then why we use similarity dimension why do we need that because it is much easier to compute than the box counting dimension you don't have to you just have to look at the object and there you go you can directly find out the box counting dimension like here this is an object you see uh, the scaling factor is about 1 by 2 in most of the time and we can what we can do is we divide this into three parts so the shape the whole shape can be decomposed into three different parts which are all self similar and all are scaled by a factor of half so we can directly say the similarity dimension would be log n upon log 1 by r so log 3 upon log 1 upon 1 upon 2 so log 3 upon log 2 okay, there you go very easy you didn't have to do anything you just have to look at the object and you find out now there will be interesting thing about this particular object which uh, will should be noted that this fractal and the Sripinsky's gasket have the same dimension log 3 upon log 2 so it's not to, to be surprised many of the fractal objects will have the same dimension it's same thing as many of the objects in the nature have same dimension uh, this uh, one thing can be three dimension another thing can also be three dimensional so dimension alone cannot distinguish one fractal from another so that's what you all have to learn now uh, looking at another object I think uh, people can easily find out how many uh, for things are needed here see this is the whole object and then you if you look at the self similar object you have one two three four five six seven such objects so you can color code it that and you see the seven different parts of this so what will be the dimension of that log n upon log one upon one upon r so one which is two so log seven upon log three you you it just this is the one third of the original size so log 7 upon log 3 the factor r is 1 by 3 so similarity dimension is log 7 upon log 3 so you can easily find that out now the what is the similarity dimension of this object this object by the way is called the Sierpinski's tetrahedron so it's uh, similar to Sierpinski's gasket but in in a higher dimension so that is called a Sierpinski's tetrahedron right so that is the Sierpinski's tetrahedron now how can you divide that can you guess uh, anyone okay so there are these are the ways so we we need uh, four such smaller tetrahedrons which are what is the size uh, reduction it is 1 by 2 so it is the dimension is log 4 upon log 2 interesting n is 4 where r is half log 4 upon log 2 2 
is it a two dimensional object now here the usual wisdom is bothered uh, it, uh, this example is saying that the two dimensional shapes need not be smooth surfaces this is uh, in general if a, if a common man sees this object he or she will say oh, oh, oh god this is uh, a 3d object no but this is a 2d object so that now uh, I'll, I'll give you another example and this is a sort of a magic basically in the next slide you will see a magic so to emphasize the scaling here what is uh, this is again a fractal object and uh, this uh, the scaling factor is 1 by 4 here so what is the similarity dimension for this log 4 4 such pieces upon log 1 by 4 wow 1 is this a one dimensional object can I prove that can I prove that this is a 2d object can I prove that this is a 1d object so here because my similarity dimension comes out to be 1 can I really prove that is there a way I can show that this is a one dimensional object is this a line okay let's do that this is the dimension of a line but this fractal does not look like a line and the formula of ds if you note that so let's go back the formula for this similarity dimension does not depend on the placement of the pieces it only depends on the number of pieces not the where are they placed only on their number and size so if we try to move some of the pieces here and there uh, we will still not hurt the fractal and but we'll see what happens to that uh, but mind you that there should not be any overlaps okay so the question is can appropriate repositioning of the pieces make this fractal look like a line which our intuition says it's a line but it does not look like a line okay so now let's see here see this animation i'm just uh, we are just repositioning this and uh, then uh, we are see that is the line wow so that's what it shows if i if i can go back i don't know so the if the repositioning of that object made it into converted into a line the similarity dimension equation can be applied only when all the pieces are scaled by the same amount if you remember Although many self-similar fractals are made of pieces scaled by different amounts. So we learn to compute by similar dimension these more general self-similar fractals. Uh, so like this, this object. In this object you see these three parts are, uh, are uh, scaled by one scaling factor. But this part is scaled by another scaling factor. So this cannot be dealt directly with this thing, this formula log n upon log 1 upon r this formula is valid only for uh, the fractals which are uh, which are uh, scaled by the same uh, uh, scale so if you, if you consider this fractal shown as i told you if you color code them it's made up of three pieces scaled by half and another piece scaled by 1 by 4 so because different r values are involved uh, the similarity dimension formula cannot be applied. What do we do? Uh, we will find the moral equation. And that we are going to discuss in the next lecture. Thank you.